Hello and welcome to Code with Joe. In this video, I will show you how to write a script in Python where we can buy token from PancakeSwap. And the great thing, this, uh, this script also works on Uniswap. So how does it work? I'm going to show you here my code. So I have here uh, my code, so the script. And when I run this script, we are prompted to enter an, an address, so a token address, and then we can purchase this uh, token from PancakeSwap. So the token has to, of course, has to be listed on PancakeSwap for this to work. And yeah, but it will work with every token on PancakeSwap. And what we do is we will use uh, we will use BNB to purchase a token. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you this. Python dot by pancake is the file name. And then when I run it. So now we can enter the contract of the of the token we want to buy. And I hit enter. And here we go. We get a transaction hash. And when I go back here to the blockchain explorer, I can paste in the transaction hash that I received. And then we can see that I purchased just right now, 10 seconds ago from my address. And I spent 0 .00, 0 0.001 wrapped BNB and I bought uh, around 10, nine Yorkies. Okay. This is how the script works. As I said, the same script works on PancakeSwap because PancakeSwap is a copy of Uniswap, so it doesn't. It also works in Uniswap. I will demonstrate it on PancakeSwap. This is again PancakeSwap being a copy of Uniswap. So everything you see me do here, you can uh, replicate this and do on the Ethereum mainnet. And the code that I'm writing here is really great because then we can use this, you know, to build trading bots or you know what anything else so how does this work so first thing we have to look how a transaction works on PancakeSwap so when I come here to trade I go here to exchange and then I, I can so it gives me my balance in BNB and then I can select a token that I want to buy I'm just using the token that I just purchased. So my bad. I have to use the contract address. Okay, so no results were found to this token. This is strange. Um, well, let's just use a different token then. I'm just using here bunny token. This works with any token what I demonstrate here. So now I select the amount that I want to purchase. And then it gives me some um, a number of the amount of token that I can actually get for this price. So at the current price, I will receive X amount of token. So here we get a number. So 0 0.0, let me make it 0 0.01. BNB uh, give me 14, uh, 0.149 bunny token. Now, what I want to do is we click here on swap and then our MetaMask, so I confirm here swap and unfortunately you don't see that step. So my MetaMask pops up and it should pop up with you too. And when you go all the way on top in MetaMask, in the first line it shows uh, the chain where we are connected to and the line below shows the account that makes the, uh, the transaction to another smart contract address and the smart contract address should start with 0x10 we can just click on it and then we can just uh, reject the transaction here in metamask i dismiss this and then i go back here to the binance chain explorer and i copy in this address here the 0x10 address this is the really important address here and this is the PancakeSwap router address. So as you can see, 
whenever we do a trade to pu uh, purchase this token we have to interact with the smart contract from PancakeSwap and the smart contract looks like this so we can go here to contract and we can see here the contract of um, PancakeSwap then we can click here on read contract and this gives us all the read functions so it gives us a factory address and it gives us the in this case again here the code from PancakeSwap is a clone from Uniswap so if you read here Uniswap uh, this you cannot see this in the code let me see we find this something from Uniswap because the uh, contract here was originally written for Uniswap but as I said this is exactly the same uh, actually they rewrote their contract so this is actually for uh, PancakeSwap was written originally for pancake swap anyways but this code um yeah my bad now now here it says uniswap library contracts yeah i was right so originally it was uh written for uniswap but uniswap a uh, pancake swap being a copy of uniswap you know it works here on pancake swap so let's not get distracted here um what i want to show you is here the write function so when we want to execute a trade we have to interact with this smart contract and when we interact with this smart contract we have to call a function and we can go here to where is the function so when we buy token we call this for uh, yeah when we buy token we call this function so we enter swap exact eat for tokens this is my bad this one is the correct one swap exact eat for token yeah so it says you swap exact eat for token again you know being a copy ethereum it works the same way on binance so and we enter here here it says bnb here it says eat but we can just enter bnb so what we want to do we want to swap exact eat for token so let's say we want to swap 0 0.01 bnb then we should get some amount of token so this is just an approximate amount then we have to route this transaction to this wrapped bnb address so here it says wrapped eat but this address is actually on PancakeSwap wrapped BNB. Go back here to my code. On here, so we have to fill in this form so we can swap exact ETH for tokens. So we have the price here. Then we enter the, the pass. So the pass is uh, when we make a transaction, it always goes to wrapped BNB and then to the token address. So the contract address this is the pass that we have to specify so i paste in the first one being the wrapped bnb address and the second one is the address of the token that we want to purchase and i copy this one in here as well then we can specify here in the in in the script uh, where we want to send those tokens so actually user a can purchase token for user b and send it to them so we could specify this but usually in pancake swap when we purchase the token we purchase it from our address and the token goes back to our address so i'm going to copy here my address and paste it in here and this is the last thing that we need is the deadline so this is when the transaction expires so in some case the transaction gets stuck then we have to specify a deadline before the transaction gets reverted and we can uh, use some epoch time i don't know what is epoch current epoch something is one six five uh, hopefully this works but as i just seen i'm not connected here to web3 so i have to enter everything again Oh no, it stays okay, great. And then 
we can actually make the transaction we call write and metamask should pop up and if we didn't make any errors is metamask not popping up we are connected how come my metamask is not popping up so let me enter here the amount out minimum zero okay now it pops up and perfect so again you don't see my metamask and i'm so mad about this uh but if you you know followed along and the you know everything was okay then you can see the confirm button and then it gives you the transaction cost for the transaction to purchase the token and then we can just click on conf uh, reject because we're not going to uh, purchase the token from bsc scan i was just showing you how to you know what the fields are needed in order to purchase token from this smart contract so we can re reject metamask and then we can actually start coding so this is how we create the transaction here for pancake swap and now we get here to let me code this so i'm having here my script and i'm going to delete everything uh, if you want to f do it the same way as I did it, I created my project folder. In my project folder, I have a virtual environment. And in this virtual environment, I have... Actually, we only need one or two files for this project. The one, the main file is where we write the majority of our code is the by, in my case, the by pancake.py file. And I also have a config.py file. This holds the private key to the address where I want to purchase tokens from. And once you have set it up the same way as me, then uh, we have to install one library. This is uh, the Web3 library, and we can install it with pip install Web3. And once, once this is done, then we actually ready to rock and roll. Uh, what Web3 is, is basically a clue between our script and the blockchain. So we call, when we write functions in our script, we call it on through the Web3 library and then it's been executed on the blockchain. Okay, so this is basically what Web3 uh, is in a nutshell. And yeah, let's get started here. So I have I already prepared my code here, of course. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make our imports. So for this project, we importing web three from web three. Then we import JSON, we import config. So if you have your private key in a separate file, you need to import this as well. In my case, it's the config.py file and I import it with you know just the file name import config and then i also if you want to automate this and for the deadline we need to import time and then we can already connect ourselves to the blockchain and we're using here the binance smart chain if you were to do this on ethereum then instead of uh, using the Note here from Binance Margin, you have to use Infura. The rest is basically the same in the whole script. And then we can save this here. So uh, with Web3, we initiate the connection here to the blockchain. So this is the node of the blockchain. And then we create an, um, an object here using the HTTP provider and the node. And then we can test if we are connected. So I'm going to run this here. And it, when we get here as answer true. Then we are connected to the blockchain. Perfect. So the next thing is that we need to do is uh, because we are interacting with a different smart contract. So we are interacting with the uh, PancakeSwap route, routing contract 
we have to import so we have to create an object for this contract so that we can call these uh, the functions on the smart contract and we can do this by specifying first of all the pancake swap router address so the contract address for the pancake swap router is this one the 0x10 this is also being used this address when newly tokens are being listed on pancake swap so yeah if you want to make a bot a sniper bot that picks up um, freshly created token so freshly listed token this is also the address that you want to listen to so i'm going to go back here so i'm going to create here the variable for the address for the contract address so i call it pen router contract address and this is the address that i just shown you here from bsc scan then the next thing that we need in order to interact with the contract we need the smart contract so the abi of the smart contract of the pancake swap router and i have it here in my notes so one second i just copy this and this is the abi and you can get the abi from From BSC scan so when you go on contract here click on code then you have the contract source code and what you need is the contract ABI and you can just copy it by clicking on there on this icon so what happened here okay so we got the contract ABI and the contract address the next thing that we need to specify is The sender address, so this is going to be uh, my address, so the address that holds BNB, and from this address we purchase the token through PancakeSwap. Then the next thing is, oh, actually we can look up the balance, so what we can do first. And since we are connected, we can look up the balance of the sender. So the BNP balance, I'm going to run this again. And then it gives me the BNP balance in way, and we can convert this easily into something human readable like this. So I convert the balance into way. So actually into ether. So this is what we got. The response here it was in way, and we convert this into ether, and then it's more so it's human readable. So let me save this, run it again. And now we can see my BNB balance in a human readable format. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, create a contract instance. And we can do this like this. So we create here a variable and we call it contract. And then we create here a contract instance with web 3eastcontract And then as address, we specify the pancake router contract address. It's the one we have up here. So this variable. And then we have the ABI and the ABI variable name is pen ABI and then you know we can create here a contract instance and once we have the contract instance created then we can actually call these functions on the smart contract so all of these functions here the right function so we could on the routing address there we can add liquidity that's why i just said earlier you know whenever somebody um lists a token on pancake swap this is the contract address the 0x10 the routing address and this is by adding liquidity this is the function that they call then we also have uh, remove liquidity we have what else do we have Li add liquidity in ethereum 
and liquidity with both tokens, so in uh, token A and token B. Then we can also remove liquidity, there, so the Ethereum that we added, we can re remove. We have some other options on how to remove liquidity. Actually eight, nine functions of them is only for liquidity. And then we have the swap, the functions to swap uh, token for Ethereum for token. So swap it for exact tokens, meaning then we have to specify the exact amount of token that we want to get out. Here we have to specify, this is the function we use. We have to specify the exact Ethereum for tokens. And this is some function with the with supporting fees. I'm not sure exactly what this does. I've never used this before. And then we can also do it reverse. So we can also, when we want to sell our tokens through PancakeSwap, we would have then to call this function, swap exact tokens for ETH, and specify, you know, all these uh, fields here. Then we have the same with the fees, etc. Uh, here is some more with the fees. So this was with fees, this was with fees, and this is swap exact tokens for tokens. So if you want to uh, swap pancake token for bunny token, you know, we will call this function here and swap tokens for exact ease. So this means we want to, we want to specify the exact amount of ease that I want to get out of the contract. This would be this function and swap tokens for exact tokens. And this is again when we want to swap two tokens with each other. But we stick today with this function here. And as I said, we have to call here all these. So we have to fill in these four uh, parameters here in the function. And we can do this like this in our script. So let me go back. Here, so we have our contract instance. The next thing that we want to do is, yeah, uh, we can, I just copy this here from my notes. So we also want to specify the token that we want to purchase. So in this case here, I have two, um, two options, we can either ask for user input, that is one that I demonstrated, where we manually enter the token address, or we can also just hard code the address into the script. So this would be the token address here. This is important and the also another important address, of course, is the wrapped BNB contract address. So because every transaction so when we um, buy a token with BNB, of course, all the transaction routes to through BNB. And so we have to specify here this, uh, the address, the BNB, uh, rep BNB address. Because BNB itself doesn't have an Ethereum address, at least not on the Binance Smart Chain. So, you know, we have to wrap the BNB into so the BNB, we have to wrap it into wrapped BNB. And this is the contract address. So then the next thing that we do is, we need to create a transaction. And in order to create a transaction or to build a transaction at the end, is we need to get the transaction uh, count. And I'm going to call this before we run the script. And this is um, called the nonce. And we can, and this is basically when you open up uh, MetaMask, then you can find somewhere where it says nonce. But this is nothing else but the transaction. So how many transactions that you had already on this address? And we have to specify, we can do it by like this, nonce is web3 dot east dot get underscore transaction underscore count. And then of course we have to specify the address. So the transaction for the address that we want to get the count from. And this is the sender address. So this is in my address. So the next thing is 
because we need the deadline when we call the function so we have to specify it with time so that's why we, i imported the time package up there and i just call it here start is time dot time and this is the current time that you know when we run the the script the next thing is then we actually need to create here the So we need to uh, set the parameters here for the transaction. So we call here, I create here a variable. I call it pancake swap underscore transaction. And then we call on the smart contract, we call the function with contract dot functions dot swap exact ease for token. So it has to be the exact um, uh, function name in order to, you know, to call it. And then we have to fill in these fields. So the first field was swap the exact tokens for ETH. So that is, let me go back here. So the first one was swap exact ETH for tokens. But since we're buying the token with BNB, I can you know specify the value when creating actually the transaction. So we're not going to use this one here. What we do here is the first one is the amount. So this you know we can look up let me show you we can actually look this up manually we can leave it here at zero but when we want to do a transaction here we get an estimated amount for the transaction so you know this is basically this amount here you know and we can say uh, if you know the, um, if we get less when we run this transaction and you know we get well, would get less than zero point uh, 0 0.139 you know then we want the transaction to revert so this is where we can specify it but we can just leave it as it is as zero and then we have to specify the path and the path we specify in our script like this so the spend so spend is Spend is of course the the first address of the co of the routing contract. So this is the wrapped BNB contract. So this is what specified under spend. Then we have the token to buy. So this is the second address. So this is actually the contract address of the smart contract. Those tokens we want to purchase from. In my case, it's the zero x six six six. It's a token that I created a while ago. Nobody bought it, so. It's a dead project, but this is the address that I'm going to use here. So I have it here in my token to buy variable and in PancakeSwap, we have just pasted in here the contract address. So this is the path that we are writing right now. Then the next thing is, uh, of course, where we want to receive the tokens to, so where the you know, once the top uh, tokens are purchased from the smart contract, uh, we want to, you know, specify the receiver in case the receiver here is also the buyer. So I want to, you know, I spend my BNB and I want to get back the token to my address. But as I said, we can specify a different uh, receiving address. And this is this one right here. And the last thing is the deadline. As I said, we have to specify a deadline for some reason the transaction gets stuck or whatnot. You know, then we can specify the current time. So I have here the current time as start. Plus we add here uh, 10,000 milliseconds. And then we have here uh, filled out everything for this transaction. So what we want to do now is here on the website, we click write and then metamask pops up and we you know we can see the details the gas fee and the total amount and then we confirm the transaction in metamask and then you know the transaction is being uh you know basically so we once we click confirm in metamask then we actually purchase the token but since we don't have metamask in our python script what we need to do is instead of having metamask sign our transaction with our private keys we have to use we have to sign it ourselves 
with our private keys in our script and we can do this by adding something onto our transaction here to the package kick swap transaction and this is actually the build transaction and i just paste it on to here and so we have here the build transaction function and here we need to specify from of course the from in my case is the sender address then we specify the value uh, if we you know because when we write a script and we're interacted by default everything is written in way so in order to make it uh, human readable we have to convert this you know, we have to use the web3.2 way function to come so we can you know convert it easily to something human readable and i'm going to change this to 0 0.1 so i want to spend so this is the amount that we want to spend so this is a, oh shit he didn't see ah oh, god it happened this again yeah so all i did was i copied here the build transaction from here to here this part i just copied and pasted so and this has uh in, in the curly braces here is the parameters as I said the from address is our address here the value again here I say it again here we have to convert it to way because by default if we not use the function we would have to if we want to send uh, 0 0.01 ether or BNB we would have to write a 1 and then 16 zeros so in with web 3 way we can just convert it to human reader readable format then we have to specify the gas price since you know usually metamask would do this for us but you know in a script we don't have metamask and we can have all we also have to set the gas price we hard coded the, we hard code the gas price because on binance margin is kind of cheap so this setting works and then the last thing that we have to specify here this is important we have also to get the nonce and this was the part up here this is the transaction count and once everything is done then we still not done we have to sign the transaction and this is now when we need our private key so this is in my case this is where the conf the import.config comes into play so i have here my private key for this address in the config.py file and then i imported it and in this line here so we sign the transaction so we create a tr signed tr transaction variable and then we call the sign transaction function with web 3easeaccountsign transaction and then we paste in here the pancake swap two underscore transaction so this was the transaction we just created up here and then we sign this transaction with our private key so if nobody sees your script you can get away with just pasting in your private key like just you know just pasting your private key like this or you do it like me with having the private key into a separate file import it into the script and then you know using referencing uh with config the private to the private key so this is up to you and then once we sign the transaction then we actually need to send the transaction and we can do it like this so we create another variable we call it transaction token and we sign the transaction so with web 3easeend underscore raw transaction and then we paste in here the signed transaction that we just signed in the previous step and then we call the raw transaction function on to the on this and the last step then we are done is that we want to get a confirmation if the transaction was successful so we can print out the transaction hash like this and we want to convert the transaction token so the transaction hash that we get here the raw transaction output we want to convert into hex and then we can just take the hex response and then just paste it into Binance chain and look it up and this is what we're going to do right now so 
if I didn't screw anything up, we should be able to purchase some token now and the token address. So I paste in here the address, enter, and we get a transaction hash back. Now let me copy this. And here in BSC scan, if I scroll up, then we can find the transaction details. And from this address, this was this vendor address, so my address, we interacted with the routing contract. And then we got from the PancakeSwap router to V2, got some wrapped BNB, and then we got so the pancake swap router sent back to this address here you see it's the same 91 your key token and when we click here to see more for the transaction we can see the input data what function was called and over here when we decode the input data we can actually see the amount in so i didn't specify any data here then the pass that we selected so we first of all we route it through the wrapped BNB address. So if you pay attention, this is the wrapped BNB address without the zero X. And this was the address of the token that we purchased also without the zero X. And then it was sent to the DX DCC 20 address. As you see, this is my address here. And then was the deadline. We specified some deadline and this was the whole transaction. And now let me click on my address here and we have here some Yorkie token and as we can see here it took me about one minute to explain all this and this was when we received the Yorkie token and this works for basically any token that we want so I can just demonstrate this with grabbing any other token here from CoinGecko I'm just going to buy SafeMoon token like this. So I got here the SafeMoon contract address, go back to my script. And I run it again because we have to enter the contract address anyway, so I don't even have to change anything. Run it. And then we enter the token address. So I paste in the address from SafeMoon, hit enter. Perfect. And we already get back our transaction hash. Copy it back to Binance Chain. Paste it in. Oh, and it failed. Oh, what happened here? What happened here? Pancakes were cancelled. Oh, my God. Now this is always this is always one of the greatest moments when you make a video you think you're so sure that it worked and then all of a sudden it fails. God damn it what happened here? Yeah so I'm not sure what happened. Uh why this uh the why the last transaction failed here. I tried here another one, I tried to buy bunny token now and it did go through. I can show you this here again. I'm just going to run this transaction here again. So, and I paste in here the contract from Ops. There was not the contract, there was the transaction hash. So, let me grab the pancake bunny contract address here, real quick again. And I paste it in here, run it. Here I get a transaction hash back. Let's go back here to uh, Binance Smart Chain here. Explorer and here the transaction went through actually. I don't know what happened why I wasn't able to purchase um, SafeMoon token with the script. But yeah, I don't know. I will, yeah. I'm going to end this video here because it's getting too long and I will work on a fix on why it doesn't work for PancakeSwap. And yeah, 
It works for any other token. I can try here another token here to show you this. Just use a recently added one. Scooby Doo. Let's buy some Scooby Doo token. Okay, this is on Ethereum. Palestine Finance already have this token here. It was doing really good, uh, this token here. Actually, I'm just going to buy one through my script here. And I run it here again, and it should work on this one as well. So paste in the contract, and we get a transaction. So let's go back here to BSC scan. And perfect. So this transaction also went through. So I don't know what happened here with the uh, safe moon why I can't buy safe moon with this contract uh, with this um, with my script but it works for any other BSC scan token okay uh, also the script is on my github and the link of to everything is in the uh, section of my of so in the below the video in this comment section ah, and also before I forget here um, this is just a thing in mm, uh, here a uh, notification here for uh, so where's my YouTube so when you come here to my uh, channel I see a lot of people are a lot of scammers are in the comment sections here so close this so when you see some comments Okay, now you don't. See, oh wait, 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 wait. That looks like there's a scammer back here. So yeah, here this is the one. So if you see a message like this here, uh, thanks for watching. And you know WhatsApp, uh, there where somebody leaves a WhatsApp. I do not have WhatsApp. I do have WhatsApp, but nobody knows it, and I'm not using it. And this is not my uh, general name. If you see, there is a little. Uh, thing on top of the O and if you click on this on his channel then you come to his channel and you see he doesn't have any content so don't fall for this and if you see them please report them I also report them all the time I don't know I hide them from the from the channel and they still come back all the time but they are, what they do is they always change the username add some you know some little thing here they also added a comma at the end so a dot at the end so yeah just if you see them please report these scam comments here they are under every comment yeah here we go and some more and some more and some more yeah do not fall for this here he has another one and this is a different account so this one has the little thing up here above the o this account has the little thing completely tricky above the i from Wistro. So somebody is really putting work into like, you know, trying to scam people here on my channel. So yeah, guys, please um, report these comments if you see them. All right, guys, that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.